Welcome to A Pleasant Solution, Embracing an Organized Life. I'm your host, certified life coach, professional organizer, and home life expert, Amelia Pleasant Kennedy. And I help folks permanently eliminate clutter in their homes and lives. On this podcast, we'll go beyond the basics of home organization to talk about why a clutter-free mindset is essential to an aligned and sustainable lifestyle. If you're someone with a to-do list, if you're managing a household, and if you're caring for others, this podcast is for you. Let's dive in. Welcome to episode 17, Decision-Making Fundamentals. Okay, y'all, let me be honest. I love making decisions. Choosing a path brings clarity of purpose and forward movement for me. Knowing the next step ahead can calm our stress levels. Just a quick side note, I don't experience anxiety on a regular basis. So I do recognize that for some of you, there may be an interplay between anxiety and today's topic of decision making. For me, making a decision often quiets any mental clutter I may be experiencing around a topic or an item. Yet, like any human, I sometimes forget how much I like making decisions. When I forget, I end up swirling around internally until I become aware of what's happening. As I've mentioned before, organized people, we aren't magical unicorns. We've just practiced these skills a bit more than others. For example, each week I decide what topic to share with you on this podcast. I intentionally choose the title of the episode, a few key points to share, and when I'll record the episode. I work with an excellent, patient podcast manager named Colette, who acts as my invisible accountability partner. I have a bazillion topic ideas, so you can expect this podcast to stick around for a while. And Without care and attention, having a bazillion ideas can lead to indecision. When I'm in indecision, the podcast production process can seem harder than it actually is. I'm sure you can relate, whether it's items around your home, a care decision for a loved one, your bottomless to-do list or around your schedule for the week ahead. But just like me, you're more organized than you think. The journey of embracing an organized life is about developing self-awareness. Noticing when you're in the swamp of indecision is the first step of getting out of the muck and mud and back on track. On today's episode, I'll address the fundamentals of decision-making. You already know how to say no or yes. You also may know when you're feeling stuck or avoiding a project or a decision. This episode will cover just the next layer deeper. I'll talk about why decision-making is a cornerstone of a clutter-free life and how you can powerfully wield the tool of decision-making to bring your goals and desires into being. One of the core values of my business is simplicity of time, space, and being. And decision-making is one way of how to bring this into reality. Okay. So the first takeaway for today is that decision-making is a skill. It can be learned and it can be taught. It's not something that people are quote-unquote good at and others of us are quote-unquote bad at. That's nonsense. 
It's a skill. The more you practice consciously deciding, the more comfortable you'll become. Consciously is the key word here. Later in the episode, I'll touch on how you're always making decisions, whether you're aware of it or not. You are making multiple tens of thousands of decisions each day already. And for the purposes of decluttering your home and life, it's about harnessing the power of your choices to craft the space and lifestyle that feels amazing. Let's take a step back in time for a moment. During the early years of your life, there were certain expectations others set for you. Each of these expectations involved a life decision, otherwise known as a big decision. Examples may include graduating from high school or attending college, moving out on your own, finding a life partner, paying your own bills, buying or renting a home, or building a family. These expectations either came from your family, your community, or from within. You were responsible for the choice and the outcome. You decided which way to go and what was next. As you've entered adulthood and midlife, however, the types of goals and future-focused expectations unexpectedly dwindle. You've achieved certain milestones and comfort and survival become more of the day-to-day focus. Of course, I'm being generic here, But notice how overall, our decision-making habits shift from being big, life-changing decisions to daily decisions. What you'll fix for dinner, whether the kids will play soccer, hockey, play the piano or violin, join the cheer squad, or learn chess. And whether you'll get up at 5.30 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. Without intentional focus, we all fall out of decision-making practice. It's not that you're suddenly bad at making decisions about what to keep or toss. It's that the number of tiny, seemingly insignificant decisions drain our energy. Making choices beyond the daily grind seems hard. Making choices to your home or lifestyle seems difficult. You begin to think that there's a right way and a wrong way to live your life, keep your home, manage your schedule. You begin to believe that once a decision is made, that you must stick with it until the end of time. (laughs) But reactivating your decision-making muscle is possible, and doing so will build your confidence, emotional fortitude, and your self-trust. Which brings me to takeaway number two. Decluttering your home, life, and schedule is rooted in powerful decisions. A decision, simply put, is essential to any progress, change, or goal. That you desire. When you're in the mindset of solving for the present, dinner, to do's, you're not routinely tapping into yourself. Instead, you're on autopilot. I get it. I get in this cycle sometimes too. I snap myself out of it by asking the question what do I really want here? Looking within slows me down and takes me out of the mental swirl. Fundamentally, decluttering is a series of decisions. That's it. That's the hard part. The physical transfer of items out of your house takes energy, yet it's the decision-making that's draining. It's the decision-making you avoid. Your brain has woven together a story about how it's going to take a long time to declutter. It's going to dredge up memories about the past. 
You may even have self-judgment. These automatic thoughts act as a roadblock for the decision-making process and delay your project further. This roadblock puts you smack in the middle of the waiting place. If you've ever read the Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, you know what I mean. So if decluttering your home, life, and schedule is rooted in decisions, indecision must be the land of clutter. Indecision, my friends, is actually a decision. It's the decision to not make a decision. It's a choice. I'll say it once more. No decision is a decision. It may not feel that way in your body or your brain. Here's another way to look at it. Visualize an item that you're wavering letting go of. Let's say it's a scarf someone gave you that's itchy and scratchy. And it's designer label. You don't wear it, yet you've got your reasons why you've held on to it for so long. Now, picture three doors. Through door one is the path to donation. Through door two is the path back into your closet. Through door three is the path to resale online or via consignment. You're standing in front of the doors. Every minute you continue to stand there looking at the doors, looking at the choices, thinking about which one is the quote unquote best or right decision, every one of those minutes is a decision. You're in the waiting place. You're in indecision. It's a choice to keep standing there, whatever the reason. Now, y'all know I'm all about awareness and not making yourself wrong for where you are at this moment. I understand some choices can be complex. What I'm hoping is that you'll see that you can stand in front of the doors as long as you like, or as long as it makes sense for you. And doing so is a decision. You may need to practice noticing that within yourself. And if so, that's progress. Delaying a decision until a later date doesn't make the need to make the decision disappear. If you've ever inherited clutter from another person, you understand. The person who originally owned the items either avoided decision-making so very long that you're now the next person that's responsible, or they decided to give the items to you. Both are decisions. I can't stress this enough. Not deciding is a decision. It's a decision to push off feeling the discomfort around the decision until another day. Whew. To recap, takeaway one of decision-making fundamentals is that it's a skill. It's a muscle you must reactivate or build. Takeaway two is that decluttering is rooted in powerful decision-making. Which brings us to takeaway number three. Every decision you make is a win. The more you practice making decisions, the easier it will become. The compound effect of not making decisions is what leads us to a cluttered home and schedule. The compound effect of intentionally Actively deciding what you want, what makes sense for your space, or what you want the shape of your days to look like, is more confidence and control. Therefore, all decisions are a win. They move you forward. Most decisions can be reversed in some way, shape, or form, too, which we often forget. 
I encourage you to give yourself credit for every single decision you make while decluttering. For example, let's say you're looking at the catch-all tray you have in the mudroom or entryway. It's overflowing with a bunch of different items. It's become an eyesore and you're ready to tackle this one small space. Cheers! You already have a win. You've decided on a space to declutter and you've narrowed your focus to this one place. I love timers, so I'd encourage you to decide on how much time you want to spend looking through the catch-all tray. Your first step is to pour everything out. There's another win. You've actually decided to start. You immediately identify the items that definitely need to stay put. Celebrate! You then identify the items that are garbage or aren't worth a second thought. Think paper clips, random business cards, or cheap surprise toys from the Happy Meal. Celebrate! You have two piles. Then there are the remaining items that belong elsewhere. You decide they don't belong and go toss out the trash and put the extra items back where they belong. You've just made a series of decisions in a short time frame, and that's a win. There are no rules in the land of home organization. You can celebrate every time you say no to a freebie piece of swag. You can celebrate every time you shred a couple of papers with sensitive information. When you reward yourself for making decisions, your brain will like the dopamine hit and seek more. That's why some folks love to declutter. They've practiced building the skill set of decision making and have been receiving lots of internal positive reinforcement along the way. Celebrating or acknowledging your progress builds a success mindset. Waiting until you've decluttered and organized the entire mudroom is ridiculous. There's no reason to wait to do a little dance. You've made progress and it's glorious. You're more organized than you think. On future episodes, I'll dive further into the nuances of decision-making. As I mentioned, it's one of the cornerstones of a clutter-free life and mind. Now, I'm off to celebrate finishing this podcast episode. I'll pass it on to my brilliant podcast editor who work her magic, and then I'll enjoy doing it all over again. Thanks so much for deciding to stick with me. I'm grateful for each and every one of y'all. Hey, y'all. My monthly Second Fridays workshop series is here. Join me on the second Friday of every month in 2023 for a practical, no frills, come as you are hour of teaching and coaching. I'll show you exactly how I handle one area of home organization. Then the floor will be open for questions and coaching. We'll troubleshoot what's feeling challenging for you and get you unstuck on the spot. Find out more and register at apleasantsolution.com forward slash workshops or via Instagram. Can't wait to meet you.